Thank you, Marla. And let me just say, welcome to all of you, whoever you are and wherever you may be on your own life's journey. You are welcome here at the Sunderland Congregational Church, a part of the United Church of Christ. And again, it's a summer Sunday, and I'm always impressed when people show up on summer Sundays because you don't have to be here, you want to be here, and I think that makes it a little bit more meaningful. So as we do come together now, we've had our prelude, uh, we've said hello to one another, and let's move right along to our opening hymn and candle lighting, which is, which is Let All Things Now Living, Blue Hymnal number 22. If you're able, I invite you to please stand. <laughs> Coming together is this congregation in person, those via Zoom, and later those via FCAT, our unison prayer. Cornerstone of our salvation, we have accepted the invitation to gather as your beloved people. We are saddened when those created in your image draw far away from you in thoughts and actions. We find hope now that we are together, seeking reconciliation with you and each other praying that broken connections may be restored among all the peoples of the world. We call on your steadfast love for assurance and healing. We feel your compassion for us, and we know it extends to all creation. We pray that others may soon recognize this blessing. 
We sense your longing for our wholeness and holiness. You call us to be saints, apostles, and prophets. We are humbled at your trust in us, and we ask that you inspire and strengthen us at worship so that we may help grow the reign of God. Amen. Good shape? Good, okay. <laughs> so I know you like to come up when Anthony is playing the piano, and you come up with Graham, and you sit right there, and you watch Anthony play the piano, right? She's like, yep, there I'm going. Yep, there, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, here today for some so what I did yesterday is I went to Tanglewood, and, I, and Tanglewood's just this beautiful outdoor place where they play beautiful music, and they had a guy like Anthony named Emmanuel Axe, and he was playing the piano. And it was a rehearsal for today's concert that's going to take place at 2.30. I have a pen at home. You have a pen at home? A piano. Oh, a piano. Do you, uh, is she playing? That's it. Wow. Maybe you'll be like a piano like Anthony someday. I didn't bring that church. Okay. You didn't bring it to church. Okay. You bring it to church. Bring it to church. No. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. But maybe, yeah. So. It, it's a button on it. It has a button on it? it? Oh, it's an electronic piano? That's very cool. So yeah, you keep practicing and maybe something you'll play for us in church. When I get bigger. When you get bigger. Absolutely. That sounds wonderful. So yesterday was a rehearsal and instead of them coming in all their fancy clothes, they came in like t-shirts and everything. And the, the conductor, he's a very famous guy, Andrus Nelson, he's got a Taekwondo shirt on. So he's advertising <laughs> some Taekwondo studio that he goes to. 
And a conductor, have you ever seen anybody up in front of a whole bunch of people waving a wand and trying to keep the, you ever see that ever on television, like 4th of July? Okay, uh, you want to see my T-Rex? <laughs> oh, is that a T-Rex? <laughs> it is. Okay, that's pretty cool. All right, and you're going to wear it? Yeah. And he protects you, huh? So uh, this, this guy conducting, he... I, I like this <laughs> What was that? T-Rex or T-Rex. You like T-Rex? Last, last week was a cat, now it's a dinosaur. We got the attention yeah, span. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ooh, he doesn't bite. He doesn't bite, does he? No. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, that was a lot of fun. So you <laughs> He's got teeth? You don't put your finger in there, though, do you? He bites you? No, okay. All right. Well, thank you, Sakura. All right. You have a wonderful Sunday school, and, and, and Anthony will be back in a couple of Sundays to play the piano again, okay? All right. All right. You're more than welcome, Sakura. More than welcome. Thank you, Jen. Thank you. All right. So, moving on. Special music today is The Sheep Am I. Um, so before we get to our prayers, uh, the whole purpose of that little story was yesterday we went to that rehearsal at Tanglewood. Beautiful day, absolutely beautiful. Little breeze coming through. And, uh, you know, there's Andrus Nelson's is the famous conductor. Emmanuel Axe is this world famous piano player. And the, the orchestra was the students that are up there at the Tanglewood Institute. So they're, I'm thinking maybe in their 20s, tops. And so there are all these young people up there. And they're, they're interacting with, you know, these world-famous musicians and they're learning and everything else. And it was just impressive to watch. And I just wanted to use their example of these young kids who are going to be tomorrow's, you know, musicians and symphonies all around the world. And so he's bringing them all together. And that's the message that Kathy already shared with us when we talk about Jesus is the cornerstone bringing us all together in this house of God. And so as beautiful as our sanctuary is, you know, if this burned down, God forbid, tonight, next Sunday, we could still gather as the church because the church is not this. The church is us being knit together in that unity with Jesus as our cornerstone. And so just like I saw, you know, Andrus Nelsons and Emmanuel Axe, these world-famous people teaching these young people how to come together to make beautiful music, that's what church gives us the opportunity to do. It allows us to come together and be stronger than we ever could on our own. And so I hope that's the message that we can all uh, take from Ephesians and, and hopefully take with us in the world, that what we do together matters. And so now it is take um, time for our prayers, our joys, our celebrations, and our concerns, and like to continue offering prayers for the nation of Ukraine and also for those that have been affected by the war between Israel and Hamas. And we pray for peace in both regions of the world and also all the other places where war is. We continue to pray for our nation as we face the reality of persistent and institutional racism. 
And I just heard before service started uh, that Mark B. Uh, from here in Sunderland, his sister is on our prayer list already, Cindy. Um, he is now um, getting care and comfort. Um, so we do keep Mark B. in our prayers as well today. And I guess we'll add him to our yellow sheet starting next week. So uh, prayers for Mark that, that he does well. Do we have any other joys, celebrations, concerns anyone would like to share? Okay, seeing none, let us turn to our yellow sheets then. Let us offer prayers for Alan, Alice, Amy and Tom, Angie, Antonia and family, Angie, Art, Bill, Bill, Bonnie, Chris and family, Cheryl, Cindy, Edna, Frank, Grayson, Jeff, Jim, John, John, Kathy, Leslie, Liz, Lynn, Marcia, Mary Jane and Joe, Michelle, Mike, Pauline, Richard, Sandra, Sandra and John, Steve, Stephen, Virginia and Richard, Wink, victims of violence and natural disasters anywhere in the world, and we pray for peace on earth. May we now turn inward for just a few moments of silence in the midst of our public worship to offer God those prayers that we choose not to say out loud. Healing God, whose touch we have sought and have known, and whose compassion surrounds us always, show us once more the dimensions of wholeness that can restore us to faithful living and also to fruitful service. May we become reconcilers within and beyond the church. Help us to believe more strongly by helping us to know more surely that our prayers, that they are heard in heaven, that they do matter to you, and that you will answer them as only you can. And for these things we pray in Jesus' name, amen. And may we now share in the prayer that Jesus gave to all of us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So we are asked to bring a portion of all that God has entrusted to us to be used for worship and also for the work of the church. The worship and the work of the church among us here present, in our local community, and even beyond. So we express our gratitude for the gift of Jesus and the peace that we know deep within our souls when we act as prophets and apostles in his name. In thanksgiving for all that God shares with us, we take this opportunity to give back to Christ and to his church. Therefore, may our contributions be as generous as our faith expects and also as our conditions in life allow, and donations will be accepted now in person, or if you're joining us remotely, they can always be mailed here to the church. However you offer, if you are able to offer, it is appreciated.
accept, O oh Lord, these offerings now to be placed here in your sanctuary as a symbol of our love for you and for all others. As we heard from Kathy, we are knit together as the house of God, the place where God can dwell amongst the people of the world with Jesus as our cornerstone. And as I said, if this building were not here, we would still be here as church because the people are the church. Our faith is the building blocks that correct, erect this church. And so for all that you do and all that you give so that we may be church, this presence of Christ in the world, thank you. And for all that you have offered so that we may continue to be the house of God in this community, thank you. And may God bless you and may God bless these offerings to God's work. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And today's reflecting hymn is Savior Like a Shepherd Lead Us, Blue Hymn number 440. Today's gospel is taken from Mark chapter six, uh, chapter six, verses thirty to thirty-four, and then fifty-three to fifty-six. And the apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and all that they had taught. And Jesus said to them, "Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest for a while, for many were coming and going, and they had no leisure, not even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves." Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. And Jesus went ashore, and he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. And when they had crossed over again, they came to the land of Gennesaret, and they moored the boat there. And when they got out of the boat, people at once recognized Jesus and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever Jesus went, 
into villages or cities or farms. They laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged Jesus that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched it, they were all healed. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be accepted to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. So on the back of your yellow prayer sheet, um, we've included a little cartoon. And that cartoon was in the Sunday paper from uh, June 23rd. And, and the reason I included it there, I thought it was kind of poignant, even for us um, in an adult kind of way. And so with that cartoon, you know the story. Um, during the day, you know, a couple of boys, they start to get into a little argument. It goes to maybe almost a fisticuffs. And they can't do it because it's during the school day. And so they say, I'm going to meet you in the playground after school. And then the word spreads throughout the school. And all the kids are supposed to show up in the playground after school to watch these two boys duke it out. But in that cartoon, nobody shows up. And they're out there by themselves. And there's, no, there's nobody to watch their fight. And so one boy says to the other, well, nobody's here. And since nobody's here, maybe we can just tell them that we had this fight, that we were valiant in our fight against each other, and maybe we can just be friends instead. And so the reason I shared that cartoon is that's a wonderful message right there. But the other thing I'd like to concentrate on is that nobody showed up. No one came to the fight. Everybody said, I'm sick of these stupid playground fights. I'm not going to another one. I have better things to do. I'm not going to show up. And so by not showing up, these two boys who kind of, you know, boxed themselves into corners that they had to fight or else they'd be called cowards and everything else. So they, they have to, they force themselves into that situation by not participating in their words and their actions of violence and hatred. It diffused, it disappeared, and they became friends. And the reason that I share that is because today in the adult world, outside of school playgrounds, there's an awful lot that kind of pushes us to, to violence and confrontation and pushes us to the extremes. And so what happens if we, as Christians, who have heard both of today's messages that we'll talk about, what if we just didn't show up? What if when all these people are pushing us to extremes, we said, we're not going to listen. We're not going to participate. We're sick of all that, and we're done with it, and we're not going to show up. And so that's, you know, like... Right now, these words, I think they all sound familiar to you. Extremism, conspiracies, hate speech, dehumanizing rhetoric, bullying, name-calling, prejudice, intimidation, harassment, and now actual, almost attempted mortal violence. What happens when all of these things are taking place in our world and we won't let them define us? They, we won't let them drive us. You know, what if we just didn't show up when all of these groups were trying to push us to the ever farther edges? You know, you've all probably heard that social media, they feed us. And so if we enjoy something on social media, there's algorithms, math. It's not people telling us we're going to go this way or that way. It's just math. If I choose, I don't know, uh, making cakes, all right, if I choose making cakes and I click on a making a cake, they're going to send me more things about clicks for making cakes. And, you know, that's not a big deal, except for when you start to get a little bit larger. But, you know, the, the whole idea about making cakes, it, it applies to other things, too, like things that are pushing us towards extremes, into separation, into disliking of one another, and to actual violence. And so once you get into that, they call it this, this rabbit hole. Once you get in, it draws you deeper and deeper in, not because they care about the issue, but because it makes money for them. The more they feed us, the deeper we get into that rabbit hole, the longer we stay on their platforms, the more money they make. And that's the only thing they care about, making more money. And so what happens if we don't show up? What happens if we don't fall down that rabbit hole? What if we make a conscious effort that I won't be drawn further in? We control them, then they don't control us. You've probably heard about news silos. We go to sites that always reinforce what we already believe. And to keep us, they have to keep telling us the same thing and even drawing us further along to the extremes. And so, again, we get to this idea of tension and, and, and like disliking one another. And we don't even know why. And we're pushed farther and farther apart. But we don't have to show up. 
We don't have to let just one group of people tell us how to believe. We can use this thing between our ears and we can think for ourselves. And so we don't have to go to the extremes. And that's actually what's coming across in today's gospel and also its lesson, the first one that we read from Kathy. I don't know if you heard it or not, but in that message, it talks about this aliens and strangers. You know, people who are neighbors, they're called aliens and strangers. Why? The other reason is because they are the party of the circumcision and the party of the uncircumcision. I hope you know what that means, because I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> All right? But that, that simple man-made, Paul says it's a man-made operation. So a person does this to somebody else. All it is is a, it's a physical operation. And Paul says, you're going to allow that to define whether you can be a friend with somebody else or whether you have to be pushed into these aliens and strangers, people that you know, people that are around you, because of that, you're going to let them be called aliens and strangers? And so religion is trying to point out to us that some of the things that divide us and push us apart, they, they're silly, and they don't need to do that. But we have to participate in not being willing to be pushed to the extremes. And religion, I hate to say, I'm embarrassed to say, because I'm a professional religious person, religion adds to that pushing to the extremes too darn often. But that first generation of Christians, the ones closest to Jesus, they were the other in their world. They were an illegal religion. They weren't sanctioned by Rome. They knew what it was to face harassment and, and also even mortal threats of death because they were other. And so when they get together and they share these writings, this is what Kathy read for us today. Now in Christ Jesus, you who are once far off, separated, extremes, polar opposites, conservative, liberal, whatever you want to call it. Now in Christ Jesus, you who are once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace. In his flesh he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall that is the hostility between us. Why do we have to hate somebody because they think differently than we do? Have all the differences of opinion you want. I've got my own opinion, you've got your opinions, but that should not lead to hatred. You know, when I was growing up in the 60s, the radical 60s, I was growing up right outside of Westfield State College. I remember me and my friend Gary riding our bikes and watching the protesters march from Westfield State into the center of town because they would go by the, uh, the president of the college's house. So, you know, it was a radicalized time. But on my street, I didn't know where somebody went to church. I didn't know if they were Democrat or Republican. All I knew is that they lived in that house down the street. What happened to us where nowadays we have to be pushed to the extremes? Why are we allowing that to happen? You know, think about Jesus in today's gospel. We've talked about this, you know, because it's been these, these succeeding weeks of stories from Mark. He goes to Nazareth, has a bad time there with his family and, and his old neighbors. Comes back out, finds out that John the Baptist not only killed but beheaded and displayed. And so now the disciples come back from their going out in pairs and, and they're just exhausted. Jesus is exhausted. It says that people are coming to them constantly. They can't even have a moment to eat in peace and talk. And so they're just, they're worn out. And Jesus says, we need a vacation. We need to get away just by ourselves. And you, you, maybe you haven't, but um, I have because you know, sometimes my job says I have to. You get ready for a vacation and all of a sudden you get the call. And because of that, the call, you can't go away. And you know how deflated you can feel when you're ready to go off and enjoy yourself and something happens and you can't go. So Jesus and the 12 are ready for vacation. And all of a sudden, they take off, but the people kind of figured out where they were going and they got there before they did. So expecting nothing but just relaxing on the beach, having dinners together, enjoying one another's company, there's this huge group of people. Jesus comes ashore, and what does he do? Get out of here, I'm on vacation. No, that's not Jesus. Jesus wades into the crowd, and he takes care of them, whatever their problems are. He says, I see them like sheep without a shepherd, and Jesus tends to them. Jesus does not ask, are you circumcised? Are you not circumcised? Are you stranger? Are you alien? He doesn't care. He goes into that mass of people, and he takes care of them for whatever they need, whoever they are. 
And that's our Jesus. And so you got the example of Jesus inspiring that first generation of Christians, like those in Ephesus, about he is our peace. We as Christians have that as our example. That's who we are supposed to listen to. That's who we are supposed to imitate. And that means we have to stop listening to the ones pushing us to the borders, to the ones pushing us farther and farther apart at the extremes, because that's only going to lead to destruction. It's only going to lead to hatred. It's only going to lead even to violence. And so we have to come together, not erase your differences. It doesn't matter that you don't think the same, but we have to look at others beyond their differences. And that's that idea that Jesus is the cornerstone, and he takes all of us, all the different people that we are, whatever we are, and he brings us together as the household of God. May that be our prayer that we can become, again, the household of God, that instead of religion helping to push us apart, that religion can bring us together because we see how silly those little fights are, like here on the playground, or those little fights about are you circumcised or are you not circumcised? All these differences that say you're a stranger and you're an alien, but yet you live right here. We have to grow up. We can't keep going down this path. And so may we become truly the house of God, not just defined by walls, but by our embrace of all others with Jesus as our cornerstone. In his name we pray, amen. And our hymn of closing today is Go Now in Peace, Blue Hymnal number 717. Thank you again for coming out to church on this uh, warm summer Sunday. It's not as bad as the past couple of weeks, but still warm. So thank you for making time in your weekend uh, to join together as this, the house of God for worship. So before we go our separate ways, let us share in a benediction and our congregational response. Live with hope, for God is with us every day. Live in peace, for God turns us away from hostility one to the other. Let us renew our covenant with God and with each other, celebrate the oneness of creation that is in Christ Jesus. We grow stronger together, built spiritually into a dwelling place for God. There are many in the world who would benefit from hearing the word and experience the blessings of this message of faith. So let us now go forth to them to share the invitation that Christ has shared with us today. In his name, amen.